Welcome to Dentiverse, Beyond the Brush, where we drill deep into the future of dentistry. I'm your host, Leila Ibrahindi, here to guide you through the cavities of innovation, from AI root canals to blockchain braces. It's time to floss your mind and brighten up your knowledge. Bite down, hold tight, and let's explore the dental universe. Hello, Alessandro. Welcome to the third episode of Dentiverse Beyond the Brush, and I'm genuinely excited and glad to have you here. Thanks for accepting. My pleasure to be with you here, and uh, yeah, let's start the discussion. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. And we met each other physically. We met each other at, uh, during Ideas Cologne. But for those who don't know you, who is Alessandro Davidis? I'm a Swiss dentist with passion for digital technologies. That's how I introduce myself to the audience. So born in Italy, in Sardinia, grew up in Switzerland, went to dental school in Switzerland, and then started my own dental office already many, many, many years ago with a focus on CAT CAM. So I was one of the first CEREC users for all of you out there who know the CEREC system the first CAT CAM system on the market, and I was one of the first users because when we were student, Professor Merman, the inventor of the system, really presented us this new philosophy of having a combination of computer, our manual skills, the patient, and creating a chair-side experience to treat patients. This was, this was something that fascinated me and still keeps me fascinating. And after more than 30 years, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed that not more dentists are doing or following this approach of working directly on the patient. So this is another concept, the chair-side dentistry concept. It seems that for many dentists, it's a little bit too complicated, or I don't know where the limitations or the, the fear is not to do this very efficient way of treating patients in one in one thing in this in a single visit so this is the huge advantage of chairside dentistry the patient comes in you treat him he leaves the office with finished work no temporaries nothing that's from my point of view very if you would if you would as a patient need to decide to come once or twice I think most of the patients would say, yeah, I come just once in your dental office and when I go out, it's everything is done. That's true. And Alessandro, you have a great knowledge background and experience. And I also know that from our also physical interaction that you had a lot of uh, side hustles. You tried a lot of new projects and new things for dental industry as well as some other some other sectors as well. And my next question is about your most current and ongoing project, which is Dental TV, and also the concept of edutainment that you explained to us. It's about combining education and entertainment. And can you please talk more about that? Where this idea came from? What is the main concept behind Dental TV and how it is helping dental professionals? So basically, the mission statement of Dental TV is uh, like everything you never learned at dental school. And if you start thinking what you don't learn at dental school, or if you study something else, what you don't learn at university is a lot. And if you start, if you start counting the, the points or highlighting the points that you are not teached at dental school because there's no time, you have to focus on learning the basics of dentistry, learning some chemistry, learning some, some, some other stuff and also train ourselves to get some manual skills during the short time that we spend at dental school. And a lot of things fell, fall behind. It's, we, don't, we don't learn a lot about photography, video, communication, marketing, mental health, finance, how to lead a team, how to build your office, you name it, it's almost endless. This was then the point to say, okay, I started with photo and video, and now slowly the dental TV platform, basically it's like a Netflix for the dental community, is growing. I started this because I saw that the online dental education is failing. 
all and even the huge platforms have failed. And I tell you why, it's two reasons. Basically, reason number one, all the platforms have the same speakers. So you, you, you go to any platform and you see the same people over, over and over again. Honestly, I don't see and feel that they are teaching on these platforms with really passion. So they, they, I feel that they're, they have been forced because they know someone <laughs> to do a lecture for this platform, 45 minutes, whatever. And honestly, it's boring. And most of the message at the end is, okay, now you listen to me for 45 minutes. If you really want to learn, come to my, come to my workshop or come to my education center or whatever, or buy my book or whatever. So it's a sales, uh, it's a marketing lecture. And, and, uh, and this is, uh, and nobody wants to listen or watch 45 minutes or whatever to get at the end this marketing message. This is number one. Number two is the length of all these videos. They are too long. Even, even a lot of content that is now on dental TV, I realize that it's way too long. I will split it in much more small pieces of information. So you want, you have a question. It's like you go on YouTube. You have a question, you put the question in, you get the answer. And you don't watch a one hour video. You are looking for the short answers to your, the, you, you want short answers to your questions. This is what dental TV will be to give short answers to questions. Pro content is produced in relation to the questions we get. So we are not producing content that we don't know if people like it or want to watch it. You need some basic, let's say we have some basic content that we have some content on the side that is not empty. But now I'm collecting questions I get from my following from colleagues around the world. And based on the questions, we will bring the answers in a video format. And it should be straight, short, to the point. And this is then, and make the videos entertaining in the sense of not really static, playing around with different backgrounds, the, playing around with, with interactions, with, with things that makes make the whole story and learning process a little bit more fun. And from your experience, what is the ideal, let's say, length? As you said, like uh, people usually, they, the concept should be one question, one answer. My question and you directly answer my question and that's it. I got the information that I was searching for and I move on to the next question or next topic. From your experience and from the current content that you have, what is the ideal length that you would recommend? So basically it goes from one minute to maximum two, three minutes. There might be some questions that, for example, if you, if you have to assemble a, a, a piece from Ikea, sometimes it takes a little bit longer that you have to watch the video. <laughs> it might take 10 minutes to assemble a special piece of furniture. But at the end, it comes down to one, two minutes, three minutes, but not more. And, and, and that I'm sure that you can explain almost everything in, in, in a very short time. So my experience also shooting videos for my social media, when I shoot them, they are two or three minutes. At the end, I cut them down to 20 seconds or 30 seconds without, without losing the major information inside. This is, this is the key. And that's the point that especially if you have specialized content like dental content, we cannot hire people from, I don't know, cheap editors from wherever in the, in the world because they don't know what we are talking about. So if, if you are the specialist of metaverse and, and, and this, so if, you, if, if I send you a video talking about the metaverse, you know, okay, this is boring, this is boring, Ah, this is, imp this is an important uh, message, this is important, and then you can cut it down to the important message. If you don't know, how can you cut a video from 2 minutes to 30 seconds? This is the point that also for dental education, you need dental professionals who 
cut down the videos, to do the summaries, people that have experience using 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 technology and condensing condensing information. So this is also from my background of 16 years being editor in chief of a journal. I already before that was my passion was always summarizing dental literature. So I'm reading a lot, trying to summarize what is the essence of of information that then is clinically relevant. So these are these are the points and condensing information, getting the the essential information out of it. This is what people need. They are also looking for that. We now have to train them that this cannot be free. This is one of the issues also for online education that the internet started in 1990. So that's a while ago. Still, there's a strong belief in the internet community that I get everything for free. And this is, we have free stuff on Dental TV. I'm working on my Instagram and other social media platforms for free, a giveaway to share some information. But if you really want the information also in a structured way, even if it's only question and answers, you have a structure, it's like a learning path. So what we are also working on is interactive video content. So this is this is then the next step. Condensing, you can record a long video by adding interaction into it. You cut it down. So you start the video and then after t- 10 seconds, you have to make a decision. Let's go left or right. So this is already a 10 second video. Then after 10 seconds or 15 seconds, you have to interact, you have to click. You have to make a decision and making decisions is then you have to wake up, say, Hey, the computer's, the video is stopping. And you say, wow, the video stopped. What, what do I need to do? So at that point I have to interact. I have to do something for me. This is, this is a very important educational process. It's not so easy, but I already played around with this. The, let's say the, the software I'm using for my for my dental TV platform is Vimeo and Vimeo has this option. I was able testing it. Unfortunately, these interactive videos do not work on iOS or Android apps because there's an issue that Apple and Google, they don't want that there are external links in their apps. If you have an external link in an app that is on, on Apple Store or Google Play Store, Google Play, that's not accepted. They take it off. And so creating full interactive videos inside an app requires much more space then. So the, the file size becomes much larger. But this is and but Vimeo is also working on that to solve the problem that in the future and hopefully in the near future we will also have interactive video on our on our smartphones. Yeah, do you think this quest for like short form content of getting your answer in under one minute, under three minutes, it comes from the shortening of attention span that people have right now? And like, as as you also mentioned, if you go to a traditional school or university environment, the usual length of, let's like, say, of a physics lecture or of, a, of an anatomy class would be anywhere between 45 minutes to one and a half hour. And at the end, also from the experience of my student years, I, I always thought to myself, well, the professor could have said this in like 10, 10, 15 minutes. You know, why do I need to stay this long? So how do you think like the current educational system may adopt this this form and condense information and as you said because there is not much knowledge out there about mental health about marketing about some soft skills etc that are as crucial as holding technical knowledge and do you think by condensing the information in a certain way you open space for some new subjects or disciplines that could be taught and that overall would would improve your educational outcome Absolutely. I remember our oldest son, the, the, the economy lectures have, have been recorded. So because of time constraint, because he studied at the ETA chemistry and economy at the university. So sometimes there were like overlaps of the lectures. All the lectures have been recorded. 
And what he did is in the evening, he watched it at double or triple speed. You know what I mean? So, so the, so the 40, so the 45, so the 45 minute lecture ended up to be 15 minutes or he could skip two, four, five minutes that professor was just talking, blah, blah. And I would say it would be much more interesting if the information would be available online. And then the professor says, okay, dear, today the topic is the finance market of Japan. So I hope everybody of you watched the, the video that I gave you prepare yourself and now I will answer your questions if there's no question then he can say okay super cool everybody uh, everybody got the message so let's go to the next lesson do you think there is some information lost in that communication of a short form content there are two things the one thing is if we study a lot of information has a very short lifespan so let's say anatomy is has no end of life because the bone, the name of the bone and the bone stays for thousands of years because evolution <laughs> changes something. But a lot of information in, 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 in fast growing things like marketing or economy or finance, even in some in industrial studies. And my brother also who studied at the ETA mechanical engineering, the professor told them, look, when you have, when you finish your four years, a lot of things that you learned at the beginning is outdated. But we had to go through because we had to follow like some, some steps. You cannot start, you cannot in the first, in the first class of, 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 of primary school, you cannot start reading books because they have first to learn to read and to write. And then so they're building up their, their skills and then you go higher levels. But if you have reached a certain level, and I think you can, you can, you can make things a little bit faster. You can make, you can accelerate. The problem is that you have always to keep uh, an eye on the, on the, on the weakest, you know? So there, there, there always will be a group that is very quick, gets the message quick and goes on and say, okay, let's jump to the next question. Uh, and some are still lost and don't know how to do. So this is the downside of saying, okay, here's the information, prepare yourself, and now tomorrow I will answer the questions. Some people will then say, dear prof, I didn't get, I didn't get the message. I was not able to digest all the information. Can you please explain? So, so this, this is, let's say the downside of it, but we will, maybe we can find like something in between to say, Okay, that you ask your audience, can, can I skip this? Did everybody get this message? Do you know this? Then we can skip this and, and continue. And so at the end of the year, you're more ahead. So you have learned more content. You have digested more content than with, with the traditional method of not interacting. I think there should be an interaction between the teacher and the students. And this, the, the teacher should ask them more, is it? Did you get the message? Can we go? Can we go to the next step and not just stay strictly to the protocol and say, okay, today I have to teach this, tomorrow I will teach this, and the other day this, so that you you create some interactivity. I like how you highlighted and mentioned the fact that, in a sense, certain things or concepts you cannot skip because those are basics, as you said, basics of let's say learning how to read, learning how to write, etc. But let's say as you know the letters, you can skip and have a choice between choosing which book to read. Uh, and in this nowadays, it's about knowing, okay, what technology to follow, or if tomorrow there is a new technical feature or etc., you have an option to choose what to study and what not to study. And especially right now with the rise of all these metaverse, AI, etc. topics, with new topics comes inside the excitement enthusiasm, but also misconception and myth. And I remember our conversation in Kern and I just loved your analogy of the, of the movie surrogate. And I would like also to, for the audience to know, to know that analogy. And I just invite you to, to speak about that. And what is the main challenge and misconception about metaverse that we have right now? That's true. Well, the main misconception, and, and for those out there who don't know this famous movie with Bruce Willis, Surrogate, where, 
where there was like the world in the outside. It was like a metaverse. So everybody had his, his or her avatar going out, looking nice, being perfect, people staying at home in sit, sitting in their chair and controlling their, their surrogate, their, their second ego. And, and then there's like the story that this, that there, there's like a break out of this, of this virtual world. So it's an analogy of a lot of people being afraid of this change. So of this change and, and you see a lot of sci-fi movies in the past. I always, I always now with all this chat GPT and KI and AI and whatever that I, I always say, have you watched 2001 Space Odyssey where Hell 9000 talking to Dave, the astronaut and telling him, sorry, Dave, I can't do that. So this was the phrase where the computer was taking over the control over the human. This is, and also philosophers these days are afraid that if with with the incre increasing speed of development of this uh, artificial intelligence, that there will be this uh, horror scenario that computers will say, okay, what is the weakest part <laughs> in the whole game? It's the human being because they are, they, they, they are not fast enough. They're not as fast as we are. They, 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 they think too much. They, they can't make decisions. So these are, these are the, the things. We don't know, we don't know where it goes. With every technology, it's important to use it wisely. So what I say is, ChatGPT is an example. ChatGPT is as good as you using it. Analogy in dentistry, it, it, the same in dentistry, you buy a new gadget, you buy a CAT cam machine, you buy a microscope, you buy any any technology, technology for your dental office. You have to learn to master it. The better the technology is, the better you have to be. Because you have to be, you have to stay at the same level. Otherwise you will fail using new technology. And that's coming back of myth of the metaverse and all these new technologies, dentists, and I think not only dentists, are afraid breaking out of their comfort zone. I see it also in my work with dental TV, with social media. The dentists, dentists are a little bit trapped in their, in their small space called dental office. They're happy. They have their patients, they have their, their private life inside there. They don't, they don't really communicate with the outside. Okay, the metaverse could be something, say, okay, you don't have to go outside, just put, put your, your glasses on and then you can go outside without leaving your comfort zone, your space. But also there, I see some, some struggle to really embrace new technologies to really do the step ahead, few people are doing it, but not the, not the mass. It's like the, 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 the story with intraoral scanners. It's still majority is not using them. If even though there's the only reason might be, okay, it's too expensive for certain parts of the world. So in certain parts of the world, it's obviously a financial limitation to adapt new technologies. I always bring the analogy, 50% of dentists worldwide are only extracting teeth. They do nothing else. They just pull out teeth because the patient comes, has pain, and he's not asking for smile design or whatever, or the meta worse. He says, I have pain, doctor, please take the tooth out. So this is reality. It's like a lot of other things. 50% of the global population has no toilet. Don't talk about cars or smartphones or high tech with those people. So we have a, we have a different levels, but now we're, but now we're talking about new technologies. And again, I all we had, we discussed that already. How do we get, how do we change the mindset of, of especially the dental community to say, okay, 
give this new technology a try. And do you think the answer might be through education, as you said, because metaverse or virtual space, for me, it's the next best thing in the sense that for me, ultimately, nothing can replace physical interaction. Being in the physical space with the professor or with your friend, with your family, that is the, that is the reality. Right now, we are doing this conversation, or if, as you said, if your older son is following his economy classes, or all the people or the students during COVID pandemic time, etc., everything is on 2D. Versus with subjects like a dentistry, or let's say engineering, or some other medical fields, we work with 3D, uh, with real people, and a reality is in a sense a 3D. And metaverse allows you to interact or to show and communicate in a in a 3D manner. So do you think combining the the concept of like creating content and short form content and bringing also people closer to education through metaverse may be an answer? We have to try whatever we can. I'm really trying hard to get the dental community engaged. So it was interesting. I met a lot of young dentists at the IDS and everybody's saying, ah, yeah, you're, you're the dentist.camera. I follow you on Instagram. Can I have a picture with you? They say, but why are you not adding comments? Why are you not interacting? Why are you not asking questions? I always tell people, if you don't ask questions, you will never get answers. You know, it's very, it's, it's very simple. And then, and then there might be the, 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 the story that these days, these days, and this is maybe also a question from me to you is. It has been relatively quiet around Mark Zuckerberg and the metaverse. And the announcement of Apple going into augmented reality was something that I think makes Mark Zuckerberg think. What, what, are, what are your thoughts? Because you see, if, if we look at the real world, Augmented reality is something that we see everywhere. Almost all online stores, you can, you can look at the sneakers, you can look at your car, you can look at everything in augmented reality. The, 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 industry, the industry seems to say, okay, and Apple is now following this, this trend, bringing, bringing this, new, this new computer, this wearable computer. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, an, an, an Oculus Quest or something. It's a real Mac computer that you're wearing on your head. So this is this is a totally different approach. I think there will be a combination. There will be a combination of, of the two strategies of the metaverse and augmented reality because at the end, it's a virtual space. But the difference is how you present it. So the concept of Apple of augmented reality is say, okay, you put something on that you see the surrounding and you can blend in information. You can, you can overlap and do whatever you want. And the other is the metaverse entering a virtual space and doing basically the same things, exchanging information, presenting information, meet, meeting each other. I agree with the fact that for, for me as well, like inside, let's say our team or with my friends, etc. I do genuinely believe that augmented reality has a lower activation energy. Let's say if you, if you look at chemical reaction, there is a barrier that you need to first pass. And actually the energy required to sustain a reaction is much lower than the one to start it. And as you said, because augmented reality doesn't feel that you lose a total connection. Uh, it's it's more approachable, it's more presentable, but I do think it does have a again a limitation because in VR, let's say I can be with you in in another space versus in augmented reality, I might not necessarily have you. I still need to FaceTime Alessandro and have his avatar and talk to him, etc. But I just think as a step, it's very interesting, and that's actually when we were watching that, the first thing that came to our mind is. First of all, it allows gamification opportunities for, for education, because right now you could put your, you, you could put your headset and you could have, let's say a 3d model of your jaw or, or of tooth decay or something more interesting and have like a better understanding of it. And in a sense right now, 
who do you think should be the stakeholder of this small revolution of gamification and entertainment in dental education and what would be the actionable steps that you would recommend someone project or a company or even let's say for dentalers or some other projects to take on and who you think should help in this process and what we are lacking today and what do we need to bring these are multiple questions in one of course yes 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 <laughs> let's go one by one like for me it's like okay if you are you are a practicing dentist uh, you have your education channel you are also very much into new technologies so you have an understanding about the potential of this right now what do you think dental education is missing and if there is a project like dentalers or a similar project what we can do as an actionable step and what do you think would bring immediate benefit and people would be first willing to adopt it as well so basically the the major issue let's start with the major issue of all these technologies related to dental education is that it's not fine enough the pro the major problem that has nothing to do with dentalverse or metaverse or whatever but i i watched all the projects from different companies how to do dental training in the in using virtual reality so but say but say the metaverse and then it's very like it's like putting garden gloves on you know the huge ones and trying to make and trying to make as a suture so this this is <laughs> This will be very complicated or very complex to do a very fine manipulation, a manual manual manipulation using very, very large instruments. So this this for me is the major, this is the major limitation we have that hinders a faster implementation of these technologies in dental education. So but this is a technical a technical limitation that we have so the 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 real dental training so how the dentist can manipulate something with his fingers cannot be reproduced today what we can do what we can do is to learn procedures so we have we can learn the steps involved in something i compare it it's like a, a flight simulator you can learn what buttons to touch, what to do in this and this situation, but then you need the practical training. You need to do it. It's like I remember when I was a student, we 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 had to do five. We had to extract five teeth in the first in 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 one in one two month session in in the surgical department. So the goal was to extract five teeth difference was there there was some students who did not extract one because they were afraid of for example i extracted 100 because i wanted to learn because i knew there were the assistants there with experience so there was i had there was no fear of failing because somebody was there helping me in in case i was not succeeding you know what i mean so this is this is the important thing, but you could learn using the virtual reality tools to get ready for something that you know, that you know, and this is where I see online education. Online education has to bring you to a higher level. That's why I'm also saying for, before I do a, a workshop on photography, I share all the basic information with the audience. I tell them, look, these are the three lectures that you have to watch. Then you know all about. And then we can really go and do a two, three, four hours efficient workshop. I compare it. If you go to a, to a, to a racetrack with your car. And then the guy is asking you, do you have a driver license? You say, no, I have never driven a car then you're at the wrong spot. You know what I mean? So you need to learn the basics first and then you can do the next step. And I see the metaverse, virtual reality, augmented reality as tools to bring ours, us to a higher level of basic knowledge, basic education, that then 
we are much way more efficient in our hands-on training. So the hands-on trainings can be reduced. You don't need to spend one week. You spend one day. You save a lot of time and you save money. When you get, because you can do this virtual training in the evening. You say, okay, I, I prepare myself using the metaverse, using, using this online education tool in different formats to get myself ready for the, for the essential part, let's say the practical exam. And at the end, dentists are workers. We work with our hands. We need manual skills. But if we know each step, so watch something, learn, learn the basics, learn the things, and then you can, then you know, ah, it's A, B, C, D. I know the sequence. I know it by heart. And then you can do it much easier without thinking of what's coming next. So there I see a huge potential and patient education is another thing. I would, I, I see a lot, a lot of potential in, let's say, virtual assistance so that you get a better connection with potential clients, with potential patients. We should then look for easier ways to implement all these tools that you have in, in, the, in, in, the, in the Dentaverse collection or in the Dentaverse world, that we can offer this to dental practices, that they, ca they have like a package, interact with their patients. So there's, from, from my point of view, there's a huge potential to create more automation, in, for example, in patient education. So you see that there are some successful YouTube dentists. And what are they doing? They are just, they have a series of videos. What is a tooth extraction? What is, what is this? What is that? How to brush your teeth? Basically, things. So if you ask them, how do you select the topics of your video? Say, yeah, th this is what our patients are asking us. And I, coming back, coming back to what I told you in the beginning, <laughs> We have to create content that answers the questions. We don't have to create content what, that we think it's cool. We have to look what are people looking for and then create the content accordingly. And not just because we know we are the specialists, we know what is cool and what is trendy. We, we produce content and maybe we produce the content not interesting for the, for the majority. And if I'm an educational establishment or also like a content creator currently like talking about in the dental sector, what would you recommend me to do if I want to go, as you said, like to, to next level and for me as well, like to try and maybe like give lectures in, in virtual space, etc. And also for on the user end, what would you recommend to the, to the creator and to the user? on how to come together and level up and adopt these technologies because there is a knowledge gap, there is a wisdom gap that we need to close and how we can achieve that for both parties. Yeah, basically, the, the, so like I started creating videos uh, some years ago. Before that, I was always afraid to speak on camera and, and then, and then I, I, I took some lessons. So I hired some coaches telling me, look, these are, these are like the basic points to overcome your camera shyness. You need to invest in some basic equipment. And then, and then it's much more fun to, to produce content, produce content that is also engaging in the way of interacting with your, with your audience. It's like something I recommend always to dentists. You need to record the video of yourself that is on your website. So for me, the most important th today, today, if, if you create a website, there should be a video of yourself on it. Today, you should present yourself in a short, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I will now replace my video because I don't like it anymore. So from time to time, I'm retaking, retaking a short video that you say, hello and welcome. Thank you for, for visiting my website. My name is Alessandro De Vigus. My team and myself will be happy to help you to, to have a better smile, to take care of your teeth. If you, have any, if you have any questions, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. At this point, we could say, 
if you have if you have any questions, we have something special for you. We have our we have we have I don't know we have Hell Nine Thousand <laughs> who is who is able to answer almost all questions you have around what we are offering, what we are doing. If this is not enough, then please book an appointment for a personal conversation, for a personal for a personal consultation. So this for me is the future of interacting, a combination of you have to show up yourself. You cannot replace everything with avatars and and, and virtual stuff because people want to see who is treating them. They want to learn about the person who is the the guy or the girl or the lady or whatever behind what they see. It's not only doing a nice website or doing a virtual space, which is uh, which is amazing. No, it's showing up yourself, but then using using these tools as additional communication tools. So make the introduction short, and then at the end say, "Okay, now I have my personal assistant." will lead you through all questions you might have. And if there's a question we cannot answer, we are happy to book an appointment or you can book an appointment and we will talk in person to you and give you some personal advice or take the x-rays we have to take or do whatever examinations are necessary to then treat your problem or solve your problem. So this is this is where I see the combination and if you explain that in that way i think it makes sense so but then you have to say okay show yourself peace in between i'm dr de vigus i'm ready to help and the patient coming to my office i can put this interactive part on my website to help patients also to find out if they need an appointment with me if I'm or my concept, my team, what I'm offering is what they are looking for. If you're an orthodontist and you have a problem with your wisdom tooth, I'm not the right person. You know what I mean? So then then the 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 my assistant, if you say, Well, I have a problem with the wisdom tooth, and say, Well, I'm sorry, we are an orthodontist practice. We are we are making your teeth straight and looking nice. But we work with specialists that can solve this problem. If you want more information, give us a call or send us a message and we will send you a list of the surgeons working with us to solve your specific problem with your wisdom tooth. So this is then also networking, communicating. So this is also a thing that most dentists are struggling with. Being honest with your patient, tell them what you can do. But also be honest what you are not doing, but not saying I'm not doing it. No, I always tell my patients if if I send them to an endodontist, say, look, this situation needs somebody who has more experience and better skills in this specific field than I have. And I want the best for you. I want the best for you. And this is the message. Then they say, wow, he doesn't want to make money with me. He sends me to a specialist because he wants the best for me. And again, your, 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 your part in this journey is to create, to create this interface between showing myself with a compact, small website or social media appearance or whatever, and then connecting, starting the connection with the patient starting getting in touch with the patient and create attention and say and the patient and feels wow this 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 practice is very, looks very professional they can answer all my questions i feel that i found the right place yes thank you if we in a sense like put it all in a chronological perspective like looking from today towards the future how far do you think we are from this and what are the intermediary steps, let's say in, in six months, in one year, in three years, in five years about the education and also the doctor-patient communication, how do you think things will evolve? 
basically we we are now ready to do what I explained to you. So the technology is here. Everybody, we need to teach the dentists to record videos. So I, I always get the messages from universities, from many parts in the world, and then they asking me, Alessandro, can you can you share some information how we can do videos, how we can take better pictures, and and this is one thing that we have to teach the dental community more, and then it's you have the technology, you could be somebody doing this. There are other players out there, but if if we have we have a connection you are the dentiverse team so i think this could be a project for you to create this this interface and say the first contact on social media on my website presenting myself not dancing around just presenting myself in a professional way and then there's no need to create thousands of videos on how to but then i i would prefer to say talk talk get in touch with my virtual assistant and they will answer all your questions so this is much easier and takes off the pressure of creating content every day and 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 really struggling so then you have professional things answering getting getting to the point much quicker and from there the the, the thing is to get the patient to your office so I think you can attract a lot of new patients with this form of, with these three steps. So personal contact, professional, professional information that is based on, on metaverse, on virtual reality, on artificial intelligence, and then bring the patient into your office. So this is, this is one thing. And this is something that I, that I see this, this is ready now. For me, this is ready now. The, the education thing also the the we have to wake up the dental community so not only the dental community has fall asleep during the pandemic so they were already closed in the dental offices before and are much more closed now so they the walls they built like higher walls around them so it's my feeling and we have to tell them hey come on please go out go out there's so, there's so much happening in the world outside. Open your eyes and embrace embrace the future. Embrace also our. A lot of people are talking about mental health problems, depression in the dental community. The major cause is because people are closing themselves in in this in this small office and are not going outside. If you would go outside. And it's not then the excuse saying, yeah, but if I go to the metaverse, I'm still trapped. You know what I mean? So there's this is one of the concerns that people are saying, do we want that people are now walking around with wearing these glasses? Then they're in a in another trap. So they're going from one trap in another. No, it's not. It's it's going out using using new technologies. It's not that you have to take wear these glasses the whole day. It's that that's not the issue. So it's like use the technology the right way in the right room. And then, and then I think, but implementing, implementing this first thing, showing the dentist that this is something important to get patients informed and get patients also easier to, to the office. I think this helps them to go the next step and say, okay, this is also a tool to educate you. We are educating your patients, but the same way we can also help you to be a better dentist. And then dental TV is something that I say, I want, I want that people on, that's also why it's on smartphone as an app, that you check the content and you say, okay, this, this short video about, I published some videos that I have done also using artificial intelligence now, it's very cool. It's very cool to do this uh, where you have avatars speaking and so on. It's uh, interesting to create content that is basically informative content in a short way. And you don't have to record all by yourself and record it two or three times. So you can much easier create presentations that are, that are informative and helping, helping the people out there to get the answers to some questions to coming back to what we have started at the beginning. 
So basically, I, I see that time is flying and we are very close to, to, uh, to, a new, to a new generation of education, especially if we see that the old style has failed. So we, there, we need, there's a need of something new. You know what I mean? It's, it's a need because everybody is now accepting or also, let's say, honestly speaking out that their concept has failed. That's true. I agree that we are now like, it's just a matter of time and the clock is ticking and the digital revolution, educational revolution, it's all around and we're really like embarking on a new system. And I liked how you mentioned in a sense, the idea that technology is there, it, it, it's just the tool. It's, it's very neutral, but how as people or as users, we use it, uh, can be, it can be extreme but it can also be in a sense like applicable and something that would benefit and add up and take you take you to another level. And I also very much agree and very much also emphasize and stress the point that during this whole journey, the one thing that we need to cling to and always keep in mind is human connection. And as you said, if people are, don't want to see avatars or some virtual objects flying around, people at the end of the day want to see people. And it's a, on the basis of human connection, on the basis of like, let's say community that is like building on, on dental TV, on dental wars, on dental industry in general as a whole, and using these tools as something that could extend our reach, our superpower, our understanding, we could go indeed like to next level. And honestly, thank you uh, for explaining in this way. I like how we started from like traditional educational system towards the short form content and question and answer, the flipped classroom model where you first watch the information and then come up with the questions, how the metaverse and new technologies, they can affect dental training. But right now we are at the point of, of inception of really making some changes and going to a next step. And I think it's an important to also give like a future outlook in that way. And I guess this also in a sense serves the purpose of this podcast episode. It's about how does current dental, what does current dental education lack? What are the misconceptions that we have right now? And what mindset shift we need to adapt towards the future? And as a closing statement, what I like to do with my speakers is to ask one last personal question about your life and experience and a question to you that I have today is what is one memorable and defining moment in your dental career that has had a significant impact on you personally and how it shaped or changed your approach to dentistry? Well, I explained it in the beginning. So this was the lecture 1985 of Professor Merman explaining to us what the CEREC system is. So CEREC stands for Ceramic Restoration and the chairside concept. So this was really, a, after this lecture, I went out, I was two years before graduating, but for me it was clear, this is the way I want to be a dentist. From this was this was really my and I told this also to Professor Berman several times that this was this was like the key moment in my in my dental career to say okay we need technology we need our personal skills we need the patient and it's the three of us trying to get the best out of it and technology I, I always tell people I'm a Swiss dentist with passion for digital technologies. So that's why I'm also passionate about photography, video, and, and all, all these tools, virtual reality, metaverse, whatever new is coming, is, has always fascinated me. But the key, the key episode in my dental career was really this, this one lecture as a, as a student. Thank you so much, Alessandro. Thank you for your time and thank you for sharing your experience and insights. My pleasure. That's it for this episode of Dentaverse Beyond the Brush. Remember, the future of dentistry is brighter when we explore together, so continue to floss your mind and expand your knowledge. To stay updated, follow our podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with your colleagues. This was your host, Leila Ibrahimli, reminding you to bite down on curiosity and keep smiling until next time.